story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. It was Thursday, January 25th, 11.35 a.m. It was overcast in Los Angeles. Before I went on vacation, I was working the day watch out of homicide. I was due back in three days. My name's Friday. I'm a cop. Good morning, Sergeant. Morning, Johnny. Don't bother to park it. I'll just be a minute. How was your vacation? Well, it's not over yet. I just came in to pick up my mail. Bad day. The whole department's in a sweat. Big trouble upstairs. back until Monday. Yeah, I know. We're up to our navels, Joe. You worked that Khrushchev thing, didn't you? Yes, sir. We got another one. Russian deputy premier. Advanced security is already upstairs in the chief's office. Big briefing. The whole third floor is going to be running shorthanded for the next 48 hours. That Khrushchev could have won a popularity contest compared to this bird. 50 death threats so far. More coming in on the hour. How's it going, Joe? Getting a good rest? I was. Tell me about it. Back molar. Had it pulled this morning. Took out three over here last week. Right now, I'd sell my whole head for 10 cents. What's this name? Carol Freeman, 26 years old, hasn't been seen for two days. Who made the missing report? Her brother. That makes number three, Skipper. Yeah, I'm sure the corner pocket's keeping count, too. Come on, the office. Joe, hop upstairs and sit in on that meat. They'll need you to work crowd detail on that Russian thing. I wouldn't worry. Looks like you only blow a couple of days. Oh, no. With my luck, the Russians will spend the weekend. If they don't, you got it back. It was 11.47 a.m. I went upstairs to the sixth floor, the administrative chief's office. Whoever this Russian was, you could tell he was important. It was a top echelon briefing. Most of the brass was there. Inspector Ed Walker, administrative inspector for the chief of police. George Beck. Captain of Central Division, Ray Rudell, Captain of TED, two Soviet NKVD advanced security agents, and a Russian interpreter. It is mandatory on the part of the Russian security agency that all food the deputy premier will consume shall be checked by Geiger counter. Also his living quarters. Tell him radiation poisoning isn't a problem here, but we'll comply. Search of all buildings, we've touched on that. That seems to cover every contingency. Not quite, there's one more. They're carrying sidearms with a muzzle velocity and a caliber unknown to us. In the interest of mutual security, we'd like to examine them. Товарищ генерал, они хотят обстрелить наше оружие. Нет, невозможно. Почему? He refuses and wants to know why. Our ballistic section has every known caliber and firearm classified. As security experts, they must know that in the event there's any shooting, both of us should be. Skipper says to tell you he's sorry. Again. You're being pulled off this detail. Your sign is up now. What? Me. Three girls, all turned up missing, one right after the other. Good indication of foul play. Guess your weekend just went out the window, didn't it? No, a phone call will square it. Send her a plant in a pot, that'll make her happy. Sure. Better get used to it to carry this. Huh? I flaked out again. I still can't pass that physical. I'm through tomorrow night. They're retiring me. Well, don't worry, the doc will give you another extension. No, not this time. I've had three already. Got a belly full of ulcers. Teeth are going bad. I'm falling apart, Joe. Glad I caught you, Uncle Bill. Oh, Joe, it's my nephew, Melvin Gannon, dental student out at SC. Glad to know you. Same here, sir. Well, I think I got it this time, Uncle Bill. Try this for size. Fits real good, don't it? Sure does. I look like I'm gathering nuts for the winter. Yeah, I know what's wrong now. I can fix that. Where are you going to be later? Well, if you ever get it fixed, just leave it in my box in the squad room. His class just started studying bridge work two weeks ago. Hi, Joe. How's the vacation? It's over. Twelve 
12.18 p.m. On the way over to interview the missing girl's brother, I stopped by my apartment to pick up my gun, handcuffs, and spare ammunition. The case had started the second week I was on vacation. Like everyone else, I had been following it in the daily newspapers. Because of its lurid nature, it was getting a big play. The missing girls were young. They were pretty. The Wilson girl. Yeah, Donna Wilson, WFA, age 28, occupation photographer's model. Made an appointment model assignment, never returned. Report turned in by ex-husband. I see you've checked him out. He's clean. Uh-huh. Gene Barrows, WFA, age 27, occupation secretary, part-time photographer's model. Made an appointment model assignment, never returned. Report turned in by apartment house manager. Neither one worked out of a model agency, huh? Advertised for jobs in the paper. Now, this latest one, Carol Freeman, WFA age 26, occupation housewife, missing report filed by brother George. I don't get it. Contact was made through a Lonely Hearts Club, something called Adam and Eve Limited. Now, the first two girls were photographers' models, the third one isn't. Where's the connection? Maybe none, but it's all we got to go on. George Freeman? That's right. We're police officers. This is my partner, Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. Have you found her? No, sir. We'd like to ask you a few questions. Sure, won't you come in, please? Thank you. Here, let me move this, and you can sit down. No, sir, don't bother. We'll stand. Have you any idea where she is? Any idea at all? No, sir, not yet. We'd like to double-check this description with you. The man she left with? No, sir, your sister. Well, it's just like I said over the phone. Was it you I talked to? No, sir, that would be missing persons. Carol Freeman, is that her full name? That's right. Five, six and a half, blue eyes, fair complexion, blonde hair. Well, it was bleached. It was naturally dark brown. Yes, sir. Weight 118? Yes. she wear glasses? No. Any distinguishing marks or scars? No, nothing at all. All right, Mr. Freeman, I wonder if you'd mind taking a look at this. Now, is this what your sister was wearing the last time you saw her? I guess... I guess you fellas think it's kind of funny painting a room at a time like this. No, sir. I just thought I'd try and surprise Carol and get this done. I gotta find somebody to look after Judy. That's Carol's little girl, you know. How old is she, Mr. Freeman? She's five. Five years old. Well, what about your sister's husband? Killed. Vietnam. Now, Mr. Freeman, I wonder if you have a picture of your sister we can take along with us for identification purposes. Yes, there's one over on that table. Thank you. Now, according to the missing report, you say your sister left here with a man night before last. Is that correct? That's correct. Around 8.15, 8.30. Had you ever seen this man before? How do you mean? Well, I mean, had he ever been here before? An old friend? Someone your sister saw regularly? No. And he gave the name Johnson? That's right, Johnson. Did he give a first name? If he didn't, I never heard it. You can understand how it is. She was lonely. Husband dead. Carol's young and pretty. Well, she started writing these pen pal letters, and she joined this club. One of those lonely heart things. Adam and Eve Limited, I think it was called. This Johnson, did he belong to the Lonely Hearts Club, too? Yes. That's where Carol met him. Did he have a car? Was he in a cab? He had his own car. Did you get the maker license number? It was dark outside. I didn't pay any attention to the license number. It was some kind of blue or black sedan. Mr. Freeman, I'm going to leave you one of our cards. If you should happen to think of anything else, would you please give us a call? All right. Thank you. Bye, sir. Oh, Sergeant Friday. This probably doesn't mean anything, but I just remembered. Yes, yeah, sir. Well, Carol forgot her gloves. I ran out to the car to give them to her. And when I opened the door, the dome light went on. And I got a look at the back seat. Yeah. Well, as I say, maybe it doesn't mean anything. Tell us anyway. Well, the whole back seat was full of camera equipment. 1.26 p.m. Bill and I checked all known sex offenders that fit the description of the suspect. We made a complete check of the mug files, listing names and L.A. numbers. 33 possibles, Joe. Uh -huh. I think the swelling's going down a little, hasn't it? Yeah, a little. 
Well, I'll go next door and ask him to pull them, but I don't know. What do you mean? Five will get you ten. Our boy's not on this list. Well, you've been wrong before. Do me a favor anyway, will you, Joe? I'll try. I got 28 hours left. Friday at 4.30 p.m., I will no longer be a working detective. Yeah. Mark it down as my last hunch, will you? Four thirty-five p.m. We drove out to the corner of Sixth and Melrose, the Lonely Hearts Club that the missing Freeman girl belonged to. Welcome to the Garden of Eden. You two Adams, no fair peeking. Social starts at eight. Yes, yes, may I help you, Adams? Yes, ma'am, I wonder if you could direct us to the person in charge here. Well, that would be Mrs. Kruger, across the vestibule and first door on your left. Thank you very much. You're from Softwell. Never mind, I don't need your card. I've got a drawer full of them. Now, let me tell you, Adam and Eve is one of your best customers. A hundred gallons of super-rich strawberry every month is no small order. And every social, it's the same story. We don't scoop your ice cream, we pour it. No, ma'am. We're police officers. This is my partner, Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. Oh. I suppose you're parked right out in front in one of those conspicuous black and white machines of yours. No, ma'am. We drive an unmarked car. Please sit down. Now, uh, you're Mrs. Kruger, are you? Correct. You manage the club? I own it. Do you have a man named Johnson registered with your club? This temple lists 140 Johnsons, 92 Eves, 48 Adams. Miss Kruger, you keep referring to Adam and Eve. We're all on a first name basis here. Oh? Simple enough. You pair an Adam with an Eve. They're the only couple in the world. Yes, ma'am. Girl by the name of Carol Freeman. Is she a member here? You were asking about Johnson. We're asking about her, too. Is she a member? Yes. We have an Eve Freeman. You mean Carol? If you insist. Why? Now, you say you list 48 men named Johnson. One of those men contacted and made a date with a girl by the name of Carol Freeman. We'd like his name, address, and phone number. Now, let's understand each other. When a man or woman embraces Adam and Eve Limited, we guarantee them confidence and privacy at all times. In other words, they fill out an application form. Absolutely. Integrity, sincerity, our watchwords. Our demands are the highest, only the finest people. They've got to be. For a small entrance fee only, temple privileges are enormous. The socials, free ice cream and cake, the coffee hour, picnics, sporting events. We furnish the bus. And this, the wedding chapel. And that most beautiful of all four-letter words, love. Oh, you bet your life they fill out an application. Fine. We'd like to see the one on this, Johnson. You're not listening, Sergeant. I told you no, and I mean it. And we mean this, Ms. Kruger. You're operating under a police permit. That permit states we have a right to check your premises any time there's a valid reason to do so. Now, unless you want that permit revoked, you show us the file on Johnson. Here's Carol. Here's Johnson. Confidential, if you please. J. Johnson. Didn't he give a first name? I think it's quite obvious, Sergeant. People very often have an initial instead of a given name. Yes, ma'am. I see this file carries a green flag. What's this mean? Green means new member. He's only been with us a week or so. Appeared to be a fine young man. It's a telephone referral to Carol Freeman, application form. Do members have to submit a photograph? Oh, yes. But Mr. Johnson's new. He hasn't brought his in as yet. This description of the man here. Is it pretty accurate? I took it down myself right off his driver's license. 
And what was the name on the driver's license? J. Johnson. Now, I don't see an address or a telephone number. Those are extracted and kept in a locked file. I'm sure you have the key. The only one. Did you notice what he put under hobbies? Photography. This really violates our pledge. 10,309 White Oak Canyon. Does he have a phone number? It's not one of our requirements. We do not record the telephone numbers of male members. But you do for women. Why, certainly. How else could we unite the Adams with the Eves? Yes, ma'am. We'll have to take these files along with us. They'll be returned when we finish our investigation. If you say so. Yes, ma'am. Well, thank you very much, Miss Kruger. You've been very helpful. We may be checking back with you. If you do, please, no black and white cars. No, ma'am. Thanks again. Just one more thing, Mrs. Kruger. We'll have to have your first name. It's Eve. Five thirty p.m. We drove up White Oak Canyon to check out the address of the suspect, Jay Johnson. Ten thousand three hundred five. Uh -huh. 10,309. It'll be right here when they build it. All right, let's go knock on some doors. 7.12 p.m. We checked every house along that section of White Oak. It took us over an hour. No one had seen or heard of a man answering the description of Jay Johnson. Tooth hurts worse than when I had it. All right, come on. We're wasting the taxpayers' money. Murdoch and Garcia? Yeah, let's get them over to Kruger and Freeman. <laughs> We headed back toward town. On the way, we telephoned the office. We talked to the night watch commander. He told us he would have police artist Hector Garcia meet us at Adam and Eve Limited, Mrs. Kruger's office. We also asked that artist Jim Murdoch meet us at the Freeman home, 7.38 p.m. Mr. Freeman, it's Jim Murdoch, one of our police artists. How are you? Jim, Mr. Freeman here is the brother of one of the missing girls. He got a pretty good look at the suspect. Fine. Yeah, all right, if I sit here. Good. Now, Mr. Freeman, this is what we're going to try to do. I want you to think carefully, remember everything you can about the man. We'll take it one step at a time. You try to tell me what his features look like as best you can, and I'll try to draw him. And between us, we'll come up with a pretty good composite of our man. All right? I understand. Okay. Now, you say his name was Johnson. That's right. All right. Suppose we start with the general shape of his head. Excuse me. Jim, we better go over and check with Garcia. Right, Joe. When do you think he can have it for us? Uh, how about sometime tomorrow? How about sometime tonight? No, 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 no! How many times do I have to tell you his eyes were not that close together, please? Now, you ask my advice, and then you don't listen. Can't you draw eyes any farther apart than that? Farther apart? Yes, ma'am, I'll try. You certainly aren't very good on hair, either. If I've told you once, I've told you five times his hair was wavy. Not straight. Wavy, 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 wavy. Yes, ma'am. Wavy, wavy. Tell me, Sergeant, you certainly don't pay this artist of yours very much, do you? No, ma'am. He's a police officer. Oh. What do you think, Hector? Tonight? Tonight? Tonight. Tonight. PM. We went back to the office, filled out the communication forms, took them down to DHQ. We put three requests into the tube. One for an APB, one to DMV, asking for a check of all vehicles registered under the name Jay Johnson. 
and one to MVS requesting a check of all operators' licenses carrying the name J. Johnson. Records and Identification Division. Here, virtually at an officer's fingertips, are filed over two and one-half million criminal record cards. Would you please run this for us, Ruth? Uh-huh. J. Johnson. Is this all you've got? Don't you have a birthday, an address, an L.A. number? Ruth, if we had all that, we'd put the collar on. Pick a card. Over 2,000 the way I make it. Look at that, Joe. Enough Johnson's there to start a small city. You're a little late, aren't you? We already have one. Well, they've all got to be checked, narrowed down, mugs pulled. We'll see that you get some help, Ruth. I'll talk to the watch commander. Right, I'll meet you at Central. 8.15 p.m. We went downstairs to Central Division to check the field interrogation reports, FI cards. When a uniformed officer working the field questions the actions of an individual, regardless of the circumstances, he fills out a card. These are maintained on file at Central Analytical. It was an outside chance, but it's happened before. The policeman is a trained observer. This ability has often helped detectives to later arrest a suspect wanted on a major charge. Bill and I screened all of the cards covering the dates surrounding Carol Freeman's disappearance. We went a step further. We checked all cards for the past 12 months. There were 37 bearing the last name Johnson, first name beginning with the letter J. 8.46 p.m., we went back up to the third floor to homicide. We talked to Sergeant Danny Mendez of the gang squad. How many did you say you've got here? 37. Joe, my squad's running short, too, with those Russians in town. We know that, Danny, but we could sure use some help. Does that have to do with those three missing girls? That's right. I can put Rodriguez and his partner on half of the cards. Maybe I can spring another team when they get back from the east side. We'll check them out for you. Thanks, Danny. You're really scratching on this one, aren't you? You got anything for sure? Yeah. Three missing girls. <laughs> Homicide, Friday. Fine. Thanks, Jim. Jim Murdoch, he's got that composite for us. 8.56 p.m., police artist Jim Murdoch completed his composite drawing of the suspect as described to him by George Freeman, brother of the missing girl. Sorry I had to give you a wet print, Joe, but you said you were in a hurry. That's all right, Jim. Freeman remember good? Yeah, no question about that, positive all the way. Did you run up any four by fives? Yeah, I'll be here in a minute. Well, I left Garcia in the lab. As I was walking out, he was putting his photo in a soup, so he should be here any minute. Fine, Jim. Hey, Joe, I thought you said Garcia and I were working on the same case. Well, I did. Why? question in our minds that both artists were accurate. Either George Freeman or Eve Kruger had lied, or now we were looking for two different suspects. You might be right. There's an outside chance he'll show up at that social tonight. Well, it's a long shot, but at least we can show these composites, talk around, we might get lucky. Possibility contacted some of the other women there. It's a long shot, I'll admit, but right now all we got's a pound of air. I was hoping my last one might be an easy one. Mm, there ain't any. At 9.43 p.m., we arrived at Adam and Eve Limited. The monthly social was underway. For a lonely hearts club, nobody seemed very lonely. There was a good crowd on hand. Nice to see you again, Adams. You'll find the refreshment center on your left as you enter the Garden of Eden. Enjoy yourselves, and be sure to mix. We'll do that, miss. I don't see Miss Kruger around, do you? No, I don't. I'd sure like to know why her version of that suspect is so different from Freeman's. Make your bet. She lied to protect the good name of the temple. I'll work the far end of the room, Joe. Pardon me. Excuse me. What are you doing there tonight, Adam? Great party. Lots of people. Most of them are run down, though. Prunes. This is the answer. Join me. I beg your pardon? Nature's gift of gold to mankind. Solve half the world's problem if more people would eat prunes. You wouldn't have to know a man by the name of Johnson, would you? 
Hmm, Adam Johnson, no. No, a couple swell looking Eve's last name with Johnson, though. Thanks, anyway. Say, I'll tell you what's real good for you. Prune yogurt. That stuff will make a man out of you. Yeah, I'm sure it will. I'll see you around. These don't look like the Adam Johnson I know. Not a bit. Never seen either one of them before. Thanks very much. I'm sorry, Adam. We can't help you. You're sure, are you? Well, thanks anyway. Uh, oh, uh, Adam, uh, what is your last name? Friday. Oh. Well, Adam Friday, I don't believe you know Eve Sorensen. Uh, come on, girls, let's us have some punch. Isn't the garden lovely tonight? I mean, so much prettier than last month, don't you think? I wouldn't know. I wasn't here last month. Oh. It, it was real nice. I mean, all the flowers and everything. Yes, I'm sure it was. You'll have to excuse me, miss. Oh, I was hoping you'd stay. I thought we might... Well, I just thought we might dance. Some other time, maybe. Oh, I think I understand. No, I don't think you do. Some other time. Excuse me. Pardon me. My name is Eve Sorensen. Isn't the garden lovely tonight? No, sir, I'm positive. That's him. You know, I never forget a face. Yes, sir, I'd swear on a stack of Bibles. That's him. Much obliged. I wonder if you'd step down to the other end of the room with me, Mr. Rodman. Sure thing, Adam. Oh, say, is it all right if I bring this along? Fine. Excuse me, miss. Uh, pardon me, miss. Excuse me. The last name is Johnson, and I'm supposed to guess which one he is. Is that the idea? No, ma'am. If you're not sure, please don't guess. Oh, I'd really like to win this one. Last month, I lost out on that trip to Catalina. An entire weekend for two. Would this by any chance be for two? No, ma'am. I'm afraid you've got it wrong. There's no prize. Oh. Pardon me, miss. Thank you. Excuse me, miss. Excuse me, miss. Could we get through, please? You bet your bird. Sorry. No. I'm sorry to say I've never seen either one of these men before. Well, thanks anyway. Are they friends of yours? Well, no, not exactly. But I'd like to get a hold of them. Joe, this is Mr. Rodman. He might have something for us. How do you do, Mr. Rodman? Oh. Much obliged. Uh, pleasure, Mr. Joe. Friday. Oh, Friday, sorry. I wonder if you'd mind stepping outside with us for a minute, Mr. Rodman. Sure thing. Much obliged. Just a minute, Adams. You're not leaving, are you? No, we'll be right back. Mr. Rodman, we're police officers. As my partner, Bill Gannon, my name's Friday. Mr. Gannon? Joe, Mr. Rodman here made one of the composites. <laughs> sure did. Do you mind pointing out the man to Sergeant Friday? Sure thing. Much obliged. This is him, right here. You're sure? I'm absolutely positive. The Freeman composite? Yeah. I never forget a face. May not be much on names. But you're sure this man's name is Johnson? No question about it. That's him. I haven't seen him around much. Saw him here at a coffee hour. Must have been a couple of weeks ago. Didn't talk to him, but I sure saw him. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Rodman. We appreciate it. Here's my card. You probably want to talk to me some more. Have me downtown for a show up, right? That's right, Mr. Rodman. Now we can reach you at this number, can we? Day or night. All right, fine. Well, thank you very much, sir. You've been a big help. Sure thing. Anytime. Hey, I better get back inside. Boys cheat, you know. Much obliged. Pretty good start, Joe. Yeah, let's go back inside and circulate. Maybe we can get lucky twice. Maybe. Was there ever really a Tommy Dorsey? Where do you think you're going? Miss Kruger? You've inspected my premises twice today. That's enough. This is not a police benefit. I've been told you've been mixing with my people, pestering them, upsetting their social. Mrs. Kruger, I wonder if you'd mind taking a look at this, please. 
Who's this supposed to be? I've never seen this man before in my life. You sure, Miss Kruger? Certainly, I'm sure. I know what this is all about now. I called the Freeman girls home, spoke with their brother. So she ran off with some man. You thought it was one of my people. I cooperated. I gave you a description of the man you said you were looking for. Obviously, it's not him, because now you've shown me a picture of another man. Yes, ma'am. Well, he's not a member. You won't find him here, and you won't find Carol Freeman here. Hey, you people, a pretty good salary. Earn it. Check the hotels. Now, Miss Kruger, Carol Freeman was a member of your club. You knew her pretty well, well enough to know she wouldn't run off and leave a five-year-old daughter. How would you know? Are you a mother? Sergeant Friday, much obliged. Uh, one more thing about these pictures. Yes, sir. Uh, this fellow here. Yes, sir. Now, while I told you before this was the man, I've been giving it a lot of thought. Yes, sir. I've got to be honest with you. Yes, sir. You put me under oath. I'd have to swear it's neither one of them. <laughs> Much obliged. Six forty seven AM Friday, January twenty sixth. The Bible of the Working Detective is his department manual. Chapter seven thirty six point oh one concerns homicide division. One of its many investigative responsibilities is missing persons. All adults missing from their usual places of abode under circumstances not conforming to their ordinary habits and who are, or may be, in need of police assistance due to the possibility of foul play. It's a busy place. And business picks up when three female adults are missing under unusual circumstances. Good afternoon. You sleep here last night? What are you doing in so early? My wife's idea said as long as it's my last day, might as well give him a full one. Besides, I couldn't sleep. Any answer from DMV or MVS? Due to the number of J. Johnson's in file, your request forwarded by mail in three days. Oh, sure. Well, it's an outside chance at best. I've been through the ammo and pervert mugs four times, pulled all possibles. Might help, might not. How about the composites? Going out to TV, newspapers, anybody who'd run them. Uh, might be a good idea to check the personal columns for any leads. Over there where Brooks sits. Stopped by the Times and the Herald, picked up the last two months' worth. Nine miles of dirt road. Let's face it, Joe, unless something breaks, we've hit a dead end. Morning, Uncle Bill. Came down early, didn't want to miss you. Got my bridge? I bet your sweet life. Hope you plan on corning the cob for lunch, because you can sure have it now. Fine. Say, how about that? Now, that looks just great, doesn't it? Smooth as glass. You'd never know you were wearing a bridge in there. I'm not. It's the right side. The right side, Melvin. That's where the bridge goes. Look at it. Still kind of pooches out a bit, doesn't it? I can fix that. Do that. I'll melt it down and go again. I'm the first human patient he's ever worked on, you know. Friday? Yeah. See you a minute? Got an old customer of yours over in 318, Carl Rockwell. Well, what's the beef this time, 261? 288, four-year-old girl. She's in County Hospital. Yeah, same old story. Copped out to the arresting officers, won't talk now. That's right. Well, you know what to do. Fill out your 510, get a kick out from the DA, and turn him loose. The only two times he made the joint, you bought his tickets. We used to be able to talk to him, Dave. Joe, you put him away twice. Maybe the psychological effect of seeing you again. I don't know. Might be worth a try. How much time you got, Dave? Three hours. 10 o'clock this morning, he walks out a free man. Thanks, Jim. Well, what do you know? The immortal sergeant. All right, Rock. Well, let's try it again. You have the right to an attorney. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say to us can be used against you in a court of law. You already told me that once. Do you understand it? Like I said, I didn't before. What do you mean you didn't before? 
Like I told you and those two uniformed bums who rousted me, I didn't understand. You didn't understand what? Boy, you are thick, aren't you? You didn't understand what? All that jazz about I can remain silent and anything I say you can testify against me. I'm going to be silent any time now, and I'll tell you when. But you understand it now. I do now. I'm getting a little tired of hearing it, but I understand it. Now you understand me. You bums have rousted me for the last time. This is the last time you're going to haul me in on a bum rap. Now, why don't you two goons join the hubcap detail and roust a few teenagers? If you think you can handle it. Suppose you tell us what you were doing with that little four-year-old in Westlake Park. It's when. Go swallow a germ, you nigger cop. Now, you listen to me, you gutter mouth punk. I've dealt with you before, and every time I did, it took me a month to wash off the filth. I'll tell you what you did with that four-year-old girl out in Westlake Park. You staked out a bench like you've always done. You bought a sack of penny candy. You waited for the right little girl to come along. Tuesday afternoon at 4 o'clock, she did. You told her you were going to take her for a ride around the block. You got her in your car. She started to cry. You hit her across the mouth twice. You cut her lip with your ring, knocked out three of her teeth. And then you know what you did to her. Now, get your head up when I'm talking to you. Now, I didn't say that, Rockwell. You did. That's exactly what you told those officers who arrested you. They advised you of your constitutional rights before you opened your mouth. Now you're trying to tell us you didn't understand. Well, you're a liar. You understood what your rights were then, just as you understand now. Somewhere in the last 40 hours, while you were rattling around in the buckets, you got the word. You know that 62 Cal 2nd 338 states that you'd be advised of your right to remain silent, and that you must thoroughly understand and waive that right, because if you don't, any confession you make is inadmissible as testimony in a court of law. Forty hours ago, you confessed what you did to that little girl. That was the truth. Now you sit here and tell us that you didn't understand your rights. That's a lie. Like every hoodlum since Kane up through Capone, you've learned to hide behind some quirk in the law. And, mister, you are a two-bit hoodlum. You've fallen twice for ADW, burglary three times, twice for forcible rape. I tagged you for those. And now you've graduated. You've moved to the sewer. You're a child molester. And this isn't the first time. We've had you in here before. And, mister, you were guilty then, and you're guilty now. Now, one last thing, you smart mouth punk. If the department doesn't question the color of his skin, you damn well see that you don't. <laughs> You know? It should be, yeah. Gannon? Yeah. Watson, personnel, how are you? Fine. Just thought I'd remind you, 4.30 today. I know. You have to turn in your badge, your ID, and your call box key. I understand. And we'll draw up your closing check. Save time. Make it out to the credit union. <laughs> Friday, Gannon? That missing girl thing you two are working? Yes, Skipper. I got one for you to roll on. I'll sign you up. What's up? Dogtown. The suspect's lying dead in a vacant lot. Eight seventeen a.m. Friday, January 26th. Dogtown. A section of the city that got its name from the dog pound located here. Three blocks away, sprawled in a vacant lot, lay the body of a dead man. WMA, 35 to 40, approximately six feet tall, 165 to 180 pounds. The deputy coroner estimated the time of death as being roughly between the hours of 2 and 4 a.m. Saturday morning. The cause of death appeared to be any one of the following. Multiple stab wounds of the abdomen, three gunshot wounds, two in the back, one in the right temple. I talked to the two men from the cruiser unit who were first to arrive at the scene. The minute Ed and I saw him, your compositor rang a bell. Yeah. Called the HQ right away. I guess your cabin got in touch with you. Right. Thanks, Bailey. Take a look, Joe. Yeah. Murdoch draw that? Yeah. Right on target, wasn't he? What do you got for us, Wayne? Not much. Body's clean. No wallet, no money. Here's all you got to go on. Wristwatch, book of matches. Watch won't do any good. Matches might. What about the clothes, Wayne? Any labels? None. Must be tailor-made. Nothing much in the way of physical evidence so far. No weapon, no empty casings, no tracks. We'll keep looking. No prints. We'll run the shoes through back at the office. 
This yellow stuff on the victim's face and clothes, how do you make it, Wayne? Took a sample. I'll know more after I run it. I'll give you an educated guess. Hot mustard, you know, in dry powder form. Looks like somebody threw a fistful in his face to blind him. All right, thanks, Wayne, Dean. All right. Take it easy, Bill. Joe? Yeah. What do you think, Joe? Let's get the Freeman girl's brother and that woman from the Lonely Hearts Club. Mrs. Kruger? Right. Let's get them both down to the morgue. Yeah. If they make him as Jay Johnson, maybe we bought our first piece of daylight. Eleven forty-seven a.m., Friday, January 26th. Bill and I went over to the coroner's office. The victim's prints were rolled and his body was posted. 338 slugs were removed from his body. A check of r and and the sheriff's fingerprint files failed to turn up any lead on the victim's identity. His prints were forwarded to Washington by airmail for an FBI check. It's kind of hard to tell. I only saw him the one time. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's him. It looks like him to me. Take another look at this composite that you gave us, Mr. Freeman. Yes, sir. But you can see for yourself. He sure looks like him. Do you think that's Jay Johnson in there on that slab? It's like I said. I believe so, but I just can't guarantee it. All right. Thanks very much, Mr. Freeman. Please tell me, Sergeant. Something's happened to Carol, hasn't it? I mean, if it's him and being dead, he might have done something to her. We don't know yet, Mr. Freeman. We've got a lot of questions. Yes. We're not going to get the answers from a dead man. You will keep looking for it just the same. We will. Thank you for coming down, Mr. Freeman. Thank you. What about that Lonely Hearts woman, Mrs. Kruger? No, I talked to her on the phone. She flatly refuses to come down. Says she's not looking at any dead bodies for anybody. Will she look at a photograph? Mm -hmm. I tried that, too. She said it'd make her sick. I think she's lying, Joe. I think she lied all along. So do I. My guess is Freeman gave us the only accurate composite. She doesn't want to tarnish her good name. What do you think, Joe? Let's run it down. Where do you want to start? The only place we can. You still got that book of matches? Hotel up in Portland. Uh-uh, not this one. What do you mean? I was up in Portland a month ago on an extradition. Yeah? This hotel hasn't even been built yet. The Kingsley Hotel chain has 13 hotels located in cities along the Pacific coast. The Hollywood Kingsley was 10 minutes away. Bill and I talked to the desk clerk on duty. I suppose you could say it's rather an unusual practice, but then... Horace Kingsley's rather an unusual man. I'd say so, printing up matches for a hotel that hasn't even been built. Tell me, wouldn't it be a good idea to put the opening date on here somewhere? That would completely eliminate the surprise element from the publicity campaign. We're looking for a man who might have registered at this hotel. He looks like this. What name did he register under? We have the name Jay Johnson. Oh, Johnson. Oh, permit me. Oh, sure. Uh, permit me. I don't uh, recall ever seeing anybody who looks like this at the hotel. No? No Johnsons at all. Perhaps Brewster could help you. Who's Brewster? One of our junior desk clerks. He'll be on duty in an hour. Now, about these matches, where do you pass them out? Up in Portland? How could we? There's no hotel to pass them out from. Yes, sir, I understand that. Every hotel in this chain passes these out to the public. The public? For example, there are 1,200 rooms in this hotel. In each room, there are four ashtrays, and there's a book of matches in each one. I see. The restaurant, the cocktail bar, the lounge, and we also make them available to the general public. You do? Certainly. My orders are to keep that bowl filled at all times. Twelve forty-five p.m., Friday, January 26th. Sure, I think I know the man you want. He looks a little like that drawing of yours. It's registered in 903. Yeah, here he is. Checked in last night at 6 p.m. His name's Charles Laborde. Home address, Paris. Paris where? Paris, France. 1.30 p.m., Friday, January 26th. We still couldn't be sure that the dead man, Charles Laborde, was the suspect we were looking for. Maybe he was Jay Johnson, maybe he wasn't. There was one way to be sure, run it down. Bill and I checked his room. A print man was called. We found nothing in his personal effects to connect him with anybody. We figured if he checked in yesterday, he might have used the telephone. He did. He made one call. I called the captain to fill him in. The skipper, we're at the Hollywood Kingsley Hotel. We got a make on the victim. He used the name Charles Laborg. 
Yeah, Laborg. L-A-B-O-R-G. We got a phone number. Intelligence is checking for an address right now. Right. We'll check in later. Right. Would you transfer me back up there? What? No, he's right here. Captain wants to talk to you. Yes, Skipper. <clears throat> well, he told me once this morning already. Oh, yes, sir, I know. Skipper, tell Watson I'll check in at 4.30. Fourth, yes, sir, I will. Okay. He's switching you back upstairs. Personnel division, that Watson. What's he think? I'm going to steal that badge and ID? Davis? Yeah, this Joe. Yeah, I'll hang on. Certainly don't need a badge to go fishing, not where I'm going. Where's that? Carmel by the sea, Joe. Carmel by the sea. Yeah, Davis. No, no, forget it. We haven't got that much time. All right, would you repeat that address, please? 4629 Foster Avenue. Right. Thanks a lot, Davis. Well, R and I can't help us. What do you mean? It's the season for common names. Huh? The party this Laborg called? Yeah. Name's William Smith. 2 p.m. Friday, January 26th. Yes, may I help you? We're looking for a William Smith. Yes? I am William Smith. We're police officers. This is Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. Are you acquainted with a man by the name of Charles LeBorg? Yes. Charles is my brother. All right, if we come in. Oh, please. Yes, of course. I am so sorry. My brother, he has done something wrong. His passport, maybe. What about his passport? I have it. <laughs> If you please, Sergeant. Thank you. Cleared immigration a month ago. Where's he been all this time? Right here. He moved out last night to the hotel for business. What business is he in? Jewelry. He's a salesman. That is his business. Was your brother interested in photography? He own any camera equipment? No, no, nothing like that. Jewelry? That is Charles' business. When's the last time you saw your brother, Mr. Smith? Well, as a matter of fact, he was here last night. I did not see him since I was at the school studying for my citizenship. <laughs> I am to be American citizen, like you. Yes, it is like I said to Charles, when you live in America, you take American name. I take a good one, William Smith. <laughs> it is a good name, no? I had a partner once named Smith. It's a good name. Yes, it is like I tell Charles. Charles, I say you change your name. That way you become an American. No one will think you are French. No? It is his first trip to America, first one. He came over for business, both, and pleasure. I'm afraid we have some bad news for you, Mr. Smith. My brother, he's in jail. No, sir, he's dead. Somebody killed him. Charles? Dead? Killed? He was struck by automobile. He was murdered. Dieu, mon Dieu. Charles murdered. Mon Dieu, how do say to Claude? What do we say? You cannot tell him. I cannot. I cannot. You are sure? Yes, sir. We're sure. Claude. J'ai appris une nouvelle chanson. Tu veux que je la joue? Claude. S'il te plaît, mon oncle, il faut absolument que tu l'entendes. C'est américain. C'est américain. Je vais la chanter en français. Mais il faudrait que tu m'apprennes les paroles américaines. Oh, loin sur la rivière, Swanee. Well, when DC, she a laissé mon cœur pour toujours où nos vieux sont restés. This is Claude, my brother's son. Claude. Il faut que tu essaies d'être un homme. Ce que je vais te dire m'a causé une peine immense. Et ça va te faire beaucoup de peine à toi aussi. 
Promets-moi d'être brave, mon thé. Je tâcherai, mon oncle. C'est au sujet de ton père, Claude. On l'a tué. Il est mort. Non, non, ce n'est pas vrai. Mon père n'est pas mort. Si, c'est vrai, Claude. Ces messieurs sont de la police et nous devons leur dire tout ce qu'ils désirent savoir. You mentioned your brother was here last night. Did the boy see him? Oh, yes, he would have. Would you ask him if his father was alone? Claude, est-ce que Charles était seul hier soir? Oui. Dans son accompagné, il est venu en taxi. He was alone. He arrived in a taxi. Would he know where his father went from here by any chance? Est-ce que ton père a dit où il allait en quittant hier soir? Il avait laissé ce mot pour toi. J'ai oublié de te le donner. Je te demande pardon. J'ai oublié. I'm sorry. It's in French. It is a note. My brother left it last night. The boy forgot. I'm sorry. My dear brother, I write you this note to advise you where you may contact me. In the event Claude might need me, I will return to the hotel later tonight, but first, I must tell you it has been my good fortune to meet two very nice friends. One of whom assures me he has a buyer for some of my jewelry. Since he is a potential customer, I have arranged to dine at the Café Rue de la Paix. My love to you both, Charles. Oh, P.S. One of the fine gentlemen speaks a little French, and I feel right at home. We'll have to take that note along with us, Mr. Smith. Of course. Thank you. Well, we'll be checking back with you. Je vous en prie, Monsieur le Policier. Je vous en supplie. Ceux qui ont tué mon père, quel qu'il soit, trouvez-les, trouvez-les. Promettez-moi que vous les trouverez. Promettez-le-moi. Je vous en supplie. The boy implores you. Please to find whoever did this to his father and see that they are punished for what they have done. p.m. Friday, January 26th. We went back to the office and ran the name Charles LeBorg through R&I. We found nothing. Nothing that said LeBorg was Jay Johnson. Nothing that said he wasn't. We had to be certain. We picked up the only lead we had. The last known place he was seen alive, a French restaurant. We talked to the parking lot boy. Yeah, I remember them guys. They was three of them. A tall, skinny guy, short little guy, and average guy. Three of them they was. Now tell us. Was this one of the men? Danged if it ain't. Average guy, that was him. Hey, you got any pictures of them other fellas? I can ID them for you, too. No, we don't have any pictures of them. You remember what kind of car they were driving? Danged if I don't. It was a 19 and 59 sword. Beg your pardon? A 19 and 59 Buick sword. You mean Le Sabre? That's what you call them. Green it was. You happen to remember the license number? Danged if I do. Could you describe the man? All three, right to a T. No, just the short one and the tall one. Height, weight, age, I won't be more than an inch over, pound under, or a year off. Before we leave, we'll do. Did you happen to hear where they said they were going after they left here? No, sir, I did not. Did they call each other by name, would you remember? No, sir, they did not. I see. One of them says to the other, uh, tall, skinny to short, little, says, Ricky, give this boy five. Took good care of our car. Ricky, I thought you said they didn't use any names. Well, not first and last, only Nick. That's a nickname, you know. That ain't gonna do you no good, is it? It might. Say, you fellas being plainclothesmen, though, who you chasing? What'd they do, rustle a car? 
murder investigation. What them three do? Murder each other? 3.12 p.m., Friday, January 26th. We got two things, an automobile and a nickname. It's a slim chance, but we better check FI autos. I'll hop upstairs and run the moniker file. Probably find a million Rickies. Far off, Joe. There were over 400 Rickies. I boiled it down to 58 possible. It's going to take a while to pull the packages. You do any good? Well, I came up with eight. All green Buicks, 559s and 360s. Could be any of them. This one looks pretty good here. Two men, Mutt and Jeff. The descriptions are close. Tagged five months ago, failed to make a boulevard stop. Traffic officer was alert, called in for a warrant check. Yeah? Turned out they were ex-cons brought in for routine questioning. Checked with their parole officer, they were clean. What do you think, Joe? Pull the packages on these 58? Gonna take time. I know. We'll probably have to do that, too. Yeah. Meantime, maybe we can save some muscle. Max Shelton. Rico Markell. Ricky. Shelton fell twice. You only hit for forgery, San Quentin for armed robbery. Look at his 510, Joe. This one's a real hard nose. Yeah, well, look here. Ricky's no choir boy. ADW, grand theft, chronic pill head, busted seven times for bar pitchers. What do you think, Joe? Well, I'd say this clinches it. Look here. Suspect is known to speak some French. Parking lot boy at the French restaurant. First stop. Cannon. It's 10 after 4, guys. I was just on my way up, Watson. Ask Joe, he'll tell you. I'm asking you. I have to have your badge and ID. Well, I have to sign retirement forms, don't I? That's right, and we close at 4.30. I'll be up in 10 minutes. You do that. It's my wife's birthday, and I'm meeting her at 5 on the other side of town. I'll be up right away. Won't hurt a bit. Where are you going? With you. That's them. Right to a T. Yes, sir, it sure is. Joe, I just checked with their parole officer. Says the address we got on him is good. At least it was four days ago. Right. This got anything to do with that dead body down on Santee Street? Why? Look at what they did to that man. Shot him dead with all them bullets. Yeah, we know. And then turned right around and stabbed him to death. Police officer Shelton, hold it right there. Stand still. There's switchblade on him, Joe. By the rust, what's it all about? The next con with a gun will do for a start. All right, put your hands down. Come on. What's this? Mints. Candy mints. Yeah, sure. Down a roll of bennies, Joe. All right, now both of you listen. You're under arrest. You have the right to an attorney. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say to us can be used against you in a court of law. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay. You're sure you understand? That's right. Neither one of us got any plans to say a word to you, Yo-Yos. You got the message, didn't you, Maxie? They don't want us to talk. All right, Markell, in here. Why are we going back in the kitchen? In there. I don't know why you're pushing me around for a lousy dollar roll of bennies. It ain't against the law to have a few bennies. Besides, I got a prescription. Same old thing. A guy gets out of stir, you got to keep hounding him. Hey, talk to my P.O., man. He'll tell you I'm straight. I'm straight. You got nothing on me and Maxie. Nothing. But me, me and Maxie, we don't have to say nothing. We don't even have to talk to you. You told us. Besides, we ain't done nothing wrong. You can stand here all day and talk to me, but I'm not going to talk to you. I don't have to. I don't have to talk to you. All right, Mark Hill. Bill. Look, you got no right to come busting in here like this. We ain't done a Shut thing. Shut up and read. I already seen this one. Try reading it this time. Keep reading.
Got a coat? What for? You're going downtown. I ain't gonna talk to you down there either. Well, now, you don't have to. Shelton copped out, told me the whole story. He said, you used the knife, you shot him three times, once in the right temple. Oh, come on, Maxie didn't tell you that. Said all he did was throw the mustard in LeBorg's eyes. All he wanted to do was to roll him. You were geed up, you had to cut him and use that 38. Now, where's your coat? Maxie's a liar. Tell him in French. Stinking little fink. Me, you spilled your guts to him in the kitchen. Never mind, Shelton. All we need now is the jewelry LeBorg was carrying and the money you took off him. Jewelry's in that green pill over there on the sofa, and money's over there. Look, you got the right gun, but the wrong man that used it. The switchblade, too, it was all his show. You loudmouth pillhead. That's enough. Joe, I'll call the office. Pay phone the hall. Right. Now, where'd you say the money was? Over there in that book underneath the brown shirt. It's not a very good place to hide it. Now we put it there because it got wet. It always does when you try to wash the blood off. All set? Not quite. Radio unit will take these two downtown. Should be here any minute. Why, it's something break? Yeah, Jay Johnson. He's not working Lonely Hearts anymore. What do you mean? He's back to photo models. Yeah. Fourth girl just disappeared. Friday, January 26th. It looked like rain. Bill and I headed for downtown Los Angeles. The captain told Bill on the phone that Sergeants Hanson and McCready had started the preliminary investigation on the fourth missing girl and were pulled off on a DB call in the same general vicinity. We had to get the information from them firsthand. It was 6.12 p.m. when we arrived at the Princess Pat Hotel, room 103. Who'd you say saw him? Manager and his wife. Said they couldn't eyeball him for sure, but they did see a tattoo on his left forearm. What kind of a tattoo? A big red rose had the word love written under it in blue. Hi, Joe. I'm Bill. Hi. Let Hi. me get the photo out of here so I can turn the print man. Please. Right. Harry, I'm going to start knocking on doors. I'll see you guys. All right. right. Feet over here. Uh, get me a long one and a couple more when they pull the pillow off. Right, sir. Hey, Joe, they tell me you and Gannon busted that Frenchman killing in 10 hours. Well, we got lucky, Harry. Hey, uh, cover the wallet and the whiskey bottles. Right, sir. Uh, you're shooting in color, aren't you? Yes, sir. Get good and close on this. You got that, Pete? Right, Sergeant. Let's step out here for a minute, Joe. Bill? Right, Harry. I'll give it to you quick. It isn't much. Missing report was turned in by a woman named Lucy Chadwick. Said she was due to be married this afternoon. The missing girl was supposed to stand up for her. What's the girl's name? Free. Name's Betty Mason. Photographer here in the missing report. Thanks, Harry. How far'd you get? You got it all. Victim telephoned the Chadwick girl last night. Said she was gonna take this photo modeling job. Some guy by the name of Johnson was gonna pick her up. Mason girl said she'd be at the wedding chapel at 3 o'clock today. When she didn't show, the Chadwick woman turned in the 316 on her. Mm-hmm. Well, I see Lucy Chadwick went over to the Mason girl's apartment late this morning. Nobody was there. You and McCready get a chance to check the girl's place? No. We had to roll on this DB call. Sure is a pretty girl, isn't she? Is or was? It was 7.15 p.m. when we arrived at the apartment of the latest missing persons victim. Betty Mason's apartment was small, but it was neat and clean. Everything seemed to be in order. There were no signs of violence. We couldn't be sure, but it didn't appear that any of her clothing or luggage was missing. There was no doubt in our minds. Betty Mason clearly intended to return to her apartment. She hadn't for over 24 hours. The odds were, like the other three missing girls before her, she never would. A couple of partials, Joe. The rest were too blurred to lift. Right. Thanks, Phil. Paper was right for once. It's going to rain. Three inches, they say. Is it all right if I leave, Sergeant? I have windows to close. Perfectly all right, ma'am. The no, landlady's work is never done. No, ma'am. I just called in. Anything? Negative. Nothing on the APBs, the bulletins? Nothing. Bill, there's got to be a loose end. Something we overlooked. Miss Johnson must have made a mistake someplace. I'd give a week's pay for just one little thing. Just one little thing. 
Bill. Yeah? This Mason girl was a model. She'd count her calories pretty good, wouldn't she? I guess they all do. Why? Take a look. All right, we got two candy bar wrappers, and we figured she wouldn't eat candy. Well, somebody did. What's the difference, Joe? Those wrappers could have been there for days. Maybe, but it's not likely. She was neat. No other ashtrays, dirty. The place is immaculate. Yeah? Let's take another look around. up on the sink. Cash register slip inside. Mm -hmm. Canyon Market, 226 Kelso Street. Not exactly the corner grocery store. That market's a good 15 miles from here. Two candy wrappers in that ashtray. That kind sells for six cents a bar. Check is for 12 cents. Look at the date. January 25th. Yesterday. <laughs> Seven thirty-five p.m. It was beginning to rain hard. Two candy wrappers aren't much to go on, but it was about all we had. You could write it on a piece of confetti. Four young women were missing. We had two different descriptions of one suspect, or maybe we had two suspects. We had a name, Jay Johnson. So did three thousand other people in the city. We were told he was a photographer. The Canyon Market could turn out to be another dead end. It was eight twenty-six p.m. when we got there and showed them the two composites. Nope. I've never seen either one of these men before. How about you, Bob? Ever see these two before? No, I haven't. You're absolutely sure? Absolutely. You might ask Norman. He's out making a delivery. Should be back any minute. All right, sir. Thank you very much. That rain's really something fierce, isn't it? People living all up and down the canyon there. All those nice homes. Don't let up. Be more landslides for sure. Yes, sir. Oh, here's Norm now. Say, Norm. These are police officers. They got a couple of drawings. They want you to look at them and see if you've seen one of these men before. Hi, boy, it's really coming down out there, no? I remember this one. You're sure? Positive. He was in about two weeks ago. Asked me to get him a dozen eggs and a loaf of bread. Pull in one of those aluminum trailers, you know. Go on. About all there was to it. Asked me if I knew a good trailer park nearby. I told him to try the Canyon View just four blocks down the street. I don't know if he ever did or not. Could you give us a description of the car or the license number? Gee, no, no. But all I remember is that trailer. Has he been in since? Yeah, come to think of it. Yesterday, during lunch, I was all alone. Yeah. He came in and he bought two candy bars. p.m. Bill and I drove over to the Canyon View trailer park. We located the manager's trailer and knocked on the door. Sorry, all filled up. Police officers, this is Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. Why don't you take a look at these drawings? Tell us if you've ever seen either one of these men before. Then get my glasses here. Never saw this one before. Well, this one here is Don Nagler. You positive? No question about it. Don Nagler. Does he have a trailer parked here? Yes, he does. Paid him a month in advance. Forget his number. Gotta get my book. He's in Space 12. You have the license number of his car and trailer? Yes, sir. It's right there. Make and model of his automobile, too. And this is the name, Don Negler, N-E-G-L-E-R? That's correct. Thank you very much, sir. Where would we find number 12? Down there, far end. Where do they get Marine gear on? Be glad to show you. No, sir, that's all right. Won't be necessary. There isn't gonna be any trouble, is there? Not unless he makes it. Police officers, ma'am. This trailer next door to you, the empty space. That little creep, what about him? When did he pull out, would you know? Oh, not soon enough. What a creep! Look, lady, we're trying to locate this man. Now, please tell us when he left here, will you? I don't know, about 15, 20 minutes ago. Why? <laughs> The 
these units or the CHP will spot him in a hurry if he tries the coast highway. Let's hit him off the other way. Cut over cold water. Right. Lean on it. K-17, 4K-17, request a clear frequency, emergency. All units on frequency 6, stand by. 4K-17, go ahead. 4K-17, request immediate broadcast to all LAPD units and intercity broadcast with special attention to L.A. Sheriff, Highway Patrol, Beverly Hills, Santa Monica, and Culver City. Following described suspect wanted for kidnap investigation. Don Nagler, alias J. Johnson. Male, Caucasian. 35 to 45 years, 5'11", 160 pounds. Subject last seen minutes ago in 600 block of Kelso Avenue. Direction taken unknown. Subject is driving a 1961 Ford. California, Adam, William, Frank, 476. Pulling all aluminum house trailer. Nebraska, 6, 4, 3, 2, 4. Advise all units to use caution. Subject may hold female kidnap victim. Any information? 4K-17, LAPD homicide, KMA 367. Roger, 4K-17, frequency 6 clear. 4K-17, all other agencies have acknowledged. 4K-17, Roger. All units on all frequencies stand by. Beverly Hills Car 4 is in pursuit of kidnap suspect, heading north on Beverly Drive, approaching Coldwater Canyon. Suspect has refused to halt, has turned on to Coldwater Canyon at increased speed. 8L20 has joined the pursuit and requests roadblock at Mulholland at Coldwater Canyon. He won't try to run that roadblock, not pulling a trailer. Well, he's got a dozen turnoffs before he hits that blockade. If he gets up on those hills, we'll never dig him out. All units, all units in 4K-17. Suspect now crossing Cherokee Lane. Beverly Hills 4 can run him all the way up the canyon. We can bottle him up. Yep. All units, all units. Suspect has run blockade at Coldwater in Mulholland. Suspect now westbound on Valley Ridge Drive. That tears it. Well, maybe not. That's all new housing up and through there. Some of those roads don't go through. All units, all units. Suspect has reached dead end at New Home Site Subdivision, 5,000 block Valley Ridge Drive. Suspect has opened fire on Beverly Hills 4 at 8L20. We're four blocks away. Let's move it. All units, kidnap suspect has reached dead end at New Home Site Subdivision, 5,000 block Valley Ridge Drive. Suspect is... p.m. Friday, January 26th. All units involved in the pursuit of the suspect, Don Nagler, converged at a new home site subdivision just off Mulholland Drive. From the edge of the leveled off ground to the floor of the valley below is a sheer drop of nearly 100 feet. Nagler had perched his car and trailer virtually on the edge of the plateau. Wilkins, 8L20. Friday and Gannon, homicide. He whipped his rig over there near the edge, jumped out of his car, fired two shots, and got into that trailer. We didn't try to return fire. Link said approach with caution. Might have a girl in there. Tear gas is no good. Windows less than a foot square. Heavy steel mesh over it. Gas shell would never penetrate anyway. <laughs> Come out now, there won't be any trouble. You're not going anywhere, Nagler. Now let's do it the easy way. Come on out of that trailer and nobody will get hurt. Can you hear me, Nagler? trailer's on the cliff side. Yeah, I know. I wonder if he's got that woman in there with him. Nagler, I want you to listen to what I have to say. Now, this is the last time around. You're right about that. It's the last time around for you. I got a woman in here. Everybody just back off, pull out of there, or I'll kill her. I mean it. Does that answer your question? We'll never get him out this way. He can stay holed up and there till he dies of old age. Slide reports coming in all up and down the canyon. A lot of weight in that rig out there. The whole mess could slide down the slope any minute. 
Wilkins, somebody get some light on the front end of that trailer, quick. Are you gonna back out of there? Or do I dump this over the side? Nagler, don't be a fool. I'm not a fool. You're the fools. Turn that light out. Get out of here and leave me alone, or I'll shove this over the side, and the girl goes with it. Do you hear me? Sergeant Friday, Officer Gannon, this is Tom Metcalf. Mr. Metcalf. How are you? Mr. Metcalf is contracting this subdivision. What's going on here, Sergeant? That trainer and all the shooting. Murder suspect. We're trying to get him out of there. Well, you better do it soon, or you'll be spooning him out of what's left of that fire road down there. There's an access road down below. Well, there was an hour ago. My company's got four other sites up along the canyon here. This rain keeps up. We stand to lose them all. Won't be enough ground left to put up a good-sized bird bath. Any way of getting up to the top here from that fire road? Uh, I don't see how. We haven't sculpted that cliff face. Mountain goat wouldn't try it now. I don't see anybody leaving! I'm getting tired of holding this thing. You've got five minutes from right now to clear out. Five minutes. See how easy it is? See? All right, Nagler, you win. We're all going to pull out. Give us a few minutes. There's a lot of cars here. Fine! That's all you've got. Five minutes. I mean it. He keeps rocking that thing up and down. He's liable to create a fissure. That whole section will go. We got to try the back door. There must be some way to get him out of there. Uh, how about the fire department? Hook and ladder, maybe? We haven't got time. All that weight. Never get that truck through that mud down there. All right, Wilkins, spread the word. Tell everybody to rev their engines. Flick their lights on and off. Anything to hold his attention. What's the angle of the incline down there? It's pretty close to 80 degrees. Soft earth. What is it is? Stuff is worse than quicksand. Give it a try. Forget it, Joe. There's got to be another way. You got one in your pocket. what you've got. It's 97.8 feet to the top here, almost straight up. Inclines riddled with loose shale, clay, and rock. The way things have been going around here, any part of that face could slough up and bury it. Maybe you should change your mind. Maybe he should. Well, this stuff's getting worse. I better contact my office. I'll be back to check this site if there's anything left to check. Yes, sir. That's not gonna hold him long. All right, tell him to save their batteries. Here. Keep them busy. Say anything. Just keep them busy. What would you suggest? Tell them about your tooth. You can't get out, Sergeant. You're blocked. Better take that black and white unit. Joe? Yeah. It's gonna be a long climb. One slip, you fall a hundred feet. If I do, I'll let you know. Sloan! Edwards! Freddy's gonna take your unit! I don't see anybody leaving! You're not fooling me! Gunning your engines! Blinking your lights. If I don't see a car pull out right this minute, I'm dumping this trailer. Okay, Nagler. There goes number one. Who are you trying to kid? You're not pulling out. You're lying. You're lying.
that cop went or I dump this trailer right now. Do you hear me? All right, Nagler. He went down the hill to call the captain. We can't pull out of here. We don't have the authority. Central Receiving for medical treatment and picked up an MT slip on the suspect. Nagler was issued clean jail denims. Bill and I took him up to the third floor for interrogation. When I walked into the homicide squad room, Inspector Ed Walker was waiting for me. I called SID, the electronic section. Perry, this is Friday, homicide. Let me have the tape in 318, will you? Friday and Gannon. Subject's name is Negler, N-E-G-L-E-R, first name Don, 187 PC. Right. Thanks, Perry. Joe, I've got an office full of press downstairs. Give me a holler when you get through talking to him, will you? Right, Ed. We know he's good on one. How about the other three missing girls? You make him on those? No, but my guess is he'll stand for them. He keeps mumbling something about a toolbox. He says as long as we've got that, there's no reason for him to talk to us. And you haven't got it? No, and we don't know where it is. You prowled the trailer out there. We did everything but pull the rivets. Let me know, Joe. All right, Nagler, we've got the tape running. Everything we say in this room is being recorded. Fine with me. Suppose you tell us about the Mason girl. She's dead. Well, we know that, Nagler. And you killed her? Why, my stuff, she's dead. But you know all about that. You got that toolbox. Why don't you tell us about the box? What's there to tell? You got it. <sighs> 1 a.m. Saturday morning. We stayed at it. 
Bill and I figured our only chance to find out about that toolbox was not to admit we didn't have it. Nagler kept insisting we did. We felt sure if we could pin it down, it would turn the key. Sergeant Friday, why don't we all save time? Just bring that box in here, open it up, and I'll tell you all about it, everything you want to know. Now, you know the box has to be checked over by the crime lab before we get it. They'll spoil everything, those people will. Another thing, we're having trouble getting it open. Sergeant, would you dump my stuff out there? Shouldn't be any trouble to open it. There's the key. Your people aren't very smart. One other thing, Nagler. You know, we had a rough time finding that toolbox of yours. That's a good place to hide it. You always kept it there? Right there in Mr. Crawford's storeroom. You know, with all those other people's suitcases and trunks, there's a rule nobody'd think to look in there. But I knew you would. Oliver Crawford, manager of the Canyon View Trailer Court. Get to the duty DA, grab a search warrant, dig out a judge to sign it, and get that box up here in a hurry and knock on it. Nagler's in the mood to talk. Let's keep him that way. Do the best I can. I have to wake a lot of people up. We know four girls that wouldn't mind. Yeah. Four thirty-five a.m. We got a break. The rain let up a little. Everybody was home, and we got the box. <laughs> See, I told you that key would fit. That's them, all right. The whole bunch. Tell us about them, Nagler. Took every single one of those pictures myself. Developed and printed them, too. Wilson. That's Gene Barrows. That's Carol Freeman. And she's Betty Mason. This movie film, you took this too? That's Carol Freeman up in the canyon. All these pictures, Nagler. When did you take them? Do you remember? Oh, sure. Just before I killed him. Show you right where I buried him. No trouble at all. All right, Nagler, one more question. Why did you kill him? I don't see why I have to tell you that. We'd like to know. Well, you're not going to. If you push me, I won't show you where I buried him, so don't push me. Maybe I'll tell you later why I did it. All right, let's go back to the squad room and check out. You can show us where you buried him. Fine with me. Sergeant, I wonder if I could ask you something. What's that? In that envelope with my stuff there, that candy bar. Could I have it? All right, give me a cup on the desk over here. What about the other girl, Sergeant? He the one that killed the other three? We have his statement. You know that's all I can tell you now. You'll have to get the details after he's been arraigned. Well, are you going to seek a murder complaint? That's right. Well, how many counts? Sorry, that's all. Sergeant Friday? Yeah, Nagler. I'll tell you now. I'll tell you why I did it. girls as they asked me to. They did, all of them. They asked you to? Sure. They said they'd rather be dead than be with me. Sergeant 
7.15 a.m. Saturday, January 27th, Negler showed us the various locations up in the Hollywood Hills where he had buried the three women victims. SID and the coroner's office completed the investigation at the scene. Bill took Don Negler to Central Jail Felony Section to be booked for 187 PC, murder. I went back to the squad room to fill out the dead body report. Where's your partner? Oh, he's downstairs booking a prisoner. He should be up in a minute. That's good. Badge and ID. Badge. ID. Call box key. Call box key. Be right up to sign those papers. Nope. This time we brought them to you. Just sign right there, please. Keep the closing checks right there on top. Sorry about being a little late. Late? Why, no. There's nothing I like better than spending the weekend here. in on you. Do that, Joe. Joe? Yeah, Bill? Save a little gas. Make it Pismo Beach. Small electronics plant up there. They need a guard. Buy a bowl of clam chowder. Fine. See you around, Joe. See you around, Bill. It's real good now, don't it? No, it doesn't, Melvin, but I have to eat. Eight months and three weeks went by. I received my orders to report to the PNF ward at Central Receiving for my annual physical. Those socks and bony knees could only belong to one man. Hey, Pismo Beach! Well, I sure didn't expect to see you here. That's my line. Joe, it's fantastic. I'm brand new again. What do you mean? Pismo Beach, like you said. Like who said? Well, you remember, I had ulcers, my teeth were going bad, I was falling apart, Joe. Yeah? That guard job I took up at Pismo Beach at the electronics plant straightened me right out. Go on. It's the clams, Joe, the clams. Huh? My wife loves them. I never really was that crazy about them, but what else do you eat up there? It's the clam capital of the world, Joe. So I started eating them, got so I liked them. They turned the trick. No more ulcers, my teeth stopped falling out, I'm a new man. You look good. Feel like a million. You gotta get started on clams, Joe. Look what they did for me. Doc Sebastian says I'm a cinch to pass my physical this time. Talked to the captain yesterday, got my old job back in homicide. Skipper says I can even join up with you again if I want. I was afraid of that. Only one more thing to pass, Joe, my blood. And I know we'll pass that. I wouldn't be too sure. What do you mean? I doubt this place has ever run a test on pure clam juice. Doctor, you're looking well. 